All right, so before I make this video, I want to make something very clear. Painting a mural is a lot of work and a lot of, it takes a lot of hours. Um, this one took me, what was it, like 140 hours of just video and then multiply that by like two or three for multiple coats. That's like 200 hours of work. If you think that, you know, you can do that, then by all means continue watching. But, you know, if you're saying, well, that's a lot of work, I don't know if I can do that, continue watching. I'm just saying it'll be a lot of work and... When I did it, I didn't really understand what I was getting myself into, and yeah, so I just want to warn you guys, it's a lot of work. So, now that we got that out of the way, if you're still watching, then that means you are good to go, you think that you might want to paint a mural, and so I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, first things first, we're going to need some sort of template to go off of in order to paint our mural. What I did was I went into my picture editing software, uh, Photoshop, you can use GIMP or whatever one you prefer, uh, but then what I did was I made a grid of 10 by 10 centimeters and then laid my images onto behind that, so that gives me a grid. Now, determining how many grids or how many squares you'll need, you're going to want to measure how big your area of mural edge is going to be. Uh, mine ended up being, actually, I don't know, but it was a good amount. But I put that onto the Photoshop program, or Photoshop picture, and then I put all the stuff that I wanted in there, and there you go, there's your template. Alright, so now we're going to start prepping our wall for the painting. So first thing you want to do is get a wet washcloth to wipe down your wall. Uh, you may need some sort of cleaner depending on what's on there. This is just to, you know, get all the gunk off your wall that would prevent the paint from sticking. By the way, if you want it, there is going to be a full tools list down in the description, so you can just copy and paste that into, you know, your word editing software, and then just print it off as if it were a checklist, so you have a little checklist to go off of. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to copy that template that we made in Photoshop or whatever photo editing software you use. We're going to copy that onto our wall, but to do that, we need to make the grid. So what you're going to need for the grid is a yardstick or a meter stick. I changed mine to a meter stick by just measuring out the centimeters on one side basically and drawing on it. And you'll need an eraser and just a regular pencil. That's all you need really for the grid and for sketching. So like I said, I use 10 by 10 centimeter squares. Uh, you can use whatever size you want. I just thought that 10 centimeters was pretty good because, you know, it's not too big but it's not too small either. After you have your grid, you're going to want to start actually sketching out your characters onto your wall with your pencil. To avoid smudging your grid while you're drawing your characters, what I did was I just folded, you know, your normal paper towel. I folded it in half, like so, and then just taped it onto my hand like this with some masking tape. Now what that does is it creates a disposable smudge guard. So you know I can use this drawn on my wall for a little while, and then once I get a bunch of uh, graphite on this side, I can just throw it away, get a new one, it's not really a big deal. If you would use a glove, then, you know, you'd have to wash it and that just creates an extra step that you don't really have to do. Also, to avoid as much smudging as possible, you don't want to draw from left to right just to avoid, you know, smearing your hand in all the pencil, but if you're left-handed, you want to go left to right. And when you use your eraser when you mess up, because you're gonna, instead of using your hand or your finger to just brush off the eraser shavings, use something like a clean paintbrush, so that way you can just brush it off without smudging all the pencil. So now comes the fun part when we start painting the background. You're gonna want to start with the background first because if you mess up you can always just go back when you're working on the characters and clean it up. So for this the first thing that we're gonna need is some masking tape. Just run it along the side of your wall or wherever you're doing it. I put it on this side of my wall, you know the ceiling. I have a door over here, you can't really see it. I put it you know along the door but that's pretty much it. Once you have your wall all masked off, you're going to want to get a drop cloth of some sort. Now, I used just some tablecloth, some plastic tablecloth, although you can use, you know, like a tarp or some sort of cloth. Or if you don't have anything like that, you could use newspaper, although that's not really a permanent solution because if you spill a lot of paint or water on it, then it could seep through onto the floor, and that's not really ideal. So you're going to want to plan on getting something plastic that the paint can't go through. Now, for the paint that I use, I use interior latex paint. Um, I think the brand is called Dutchman. Uh, it's not really, you know, a high quality paint, just whatever interior paint that you can find at your local hardware store, you know, like Menards or Home Depot, wherever you live. So yeah, I just get some of that paint. Um, I think I got a quart, is that what they call them? Just a second. So for the paint, I got a pint of each color for the background, 
and then all the primary colors. So that'd be blue, yellow, and red. Although I already had the blue for the background, so I didn't have to buy another one of those. And then another pint for black and white, and then I got another little smaller sample bottle for a base skin color that I could use. Now while you're at the hardware store, you might want to pick up some brushes. Um, if you're using latex paint or water paint, then you're going to want to buy synthetic brushes because if you use natural brushes, then it'll soak up all the water in the paint and it'll be a lot harder to paint with. Now if you're using oil paint, on the other hand, you're going to want to use regular natural brushes because if you use synthetic brushes, then the paint, the oil paint will stick like impossibly hard to get out into the synthetic brushes. Now in terms of size, you're going to want to get, you know, a fairly decent one. Uh, I think this one's an inch wide by probably like two inches tall. You're going to want a large one, medium to small. You know, just brushes of varying sizes. Now for the background, you can see I actually did kind of a starburst pattern. And the way that I got the lines super crisp for that is I used masking tape on the wall. Now I actually did a special thing with this. Basically what I did was I marked off where I wanted the division between the two colors. And then I put down my tape on the other side of where I wanted the first color. And then I put down the first color. Once that dried, I take off the tape again and put the tape actually back down, but this time on the other side of where I want the second color. Now what I do is I take the first color and brush back into the tape so that way it creates a seal where the tape is and there won't be any bleed through. Once that's dried, I come back with the second color and paint just like normal. After that's done, I take off the tape and we get perfect line. Also, while you're painting, you're going to need to wash your brushes. I recommend using, you know, just ice cream bucket and fill it with some water and you can just, you know, rinse your brushes out in that instead of having to go to a sink all the time and possibly getting that clogged with paint. And if you mess up at any time while painting, um, you're going to want to grab your wet washcloth and very quickly wipe off the paint. Um, it might not come off 100%, but it'll help. Now when painting, you're probably going to need two to three coats per color, so always make sure to mix more paint than you need, because that's always better to have more than less and be running out of paint, and you know, then it looks pretty shoddy and bad. So now we move on to the really fun part, painting the characters. So for painting the characters, it's going to be a little more detailed than the background, so we're going to need a medium and a small brush rather than the large brush we were using before. Now, going out to buy all of these colors individually in individual buckets would have cost me a lot more. So what I did was I bought all of the primary colors and then mixed those together in some trays and jars in order to use that instead of you know, buying every color on my wall. Now, if you don't know about you know, color theory and stuff, this part might actually be pretty hard for you. Um, I would recommend, you know, doing some research about how colors work and how you can mix them together. What I use to mix the colors together is I use, I started out using these little nacho tray things and then just put them in, put the paint in here, but I eventually ran out of these. So I started using these little tea light -like candle holder things. And these are actually pretty good because you can wash them out and reuse them rather than these, which, you know, the paint is actually really hard to get out of these. So you're better off just throwing them away. Once you have the color that you want in your little jar, you're gonna wanna take some saran wrap or plastic wrap and just put it over the cup and put a rubber band around that. Now what that does is it seals off the air from the paint, which slows down evaporation of the water, which, you know, keeps the paint lasting longer. Still haven't talked about how to mix the paint though, so we're gonna do that now. So what I did was I took a bunch of different plastic uh, spoons and just scooped the paint out of the jars that I got and put them into the trays. Once they're in the trays, I used some plastic knives in order to stir it up in the tray, and then once that's all done, I wash all the spoons and knives and then reuse them again. Now, I used pretty much one spoon per color, so I didn't mix the colors in the jars at all. So that's one thing you wanna keep in mind. You do not want other colors getting into the jar, because then that'll change the color of the paint you bought, and you won't be able to undo that. Again, here, you're going to want a bucket of water in order to clean all your stuff without going to the sink every time. Again, while you're painting the characters, you're going to want to work back to front, so that way you give yourself some leeway and you're not, you know, screwing yourself by putting yourself into a corner that you can't get out of. Alright, so now that we have all of the characters mainly painted, we're going to go back with some small and fine brushes in order to get the outlines and details of the characters. I used just straight black going over most of the characters. Actually for this one over here, I used a very slight blue black 
although you can't really see that in the video. Basically, you're going to want to go through and add details in places like the mouth and the eyes with black, and then go back over it again in the outline, so that way you can make it pop even more out of the background. Now, with my mural, I actually did... I did three different manga slash anime characters. Um, that one's Kirito, Alphonse, and Edward Elric. So what I did with those was I actually made the outline of their um, body to where the background touches their character. I made that a little bit thicker than the detail lines, so that way it just gives it that even more extra pop and makes it look more manga style. Rather than with uh, Korra and Aang, I didn't do that as much because, you know, they're more of a western style comic and cartoon, so they don't have as much of that style, although they are a little bit thicker, just not as much. And now we are done. So give yourself a pat on the back, you did everything nice and job. So now time for cleanup, I know, not the most fun topic, but we have to do it. So first thing you want to do is take off all your tape. Um, if it's been on there for a long time, then I would suggest using, you know, like a box cutter in order to go in front of the tape as you're pulling it down, so that way it doesn't peel off any of your paint that you worked so hard to place in the right spot. You're also going to want to take your wet washcloth one more time and very lightly scrub down the whole wall to make sure there isn't any leftover graphite or pencil lead on the wall that could lead to some shading where you don't want it. Don't scrub too hard because if the outline still hasn't fully cured, then it could wipe off a little bit and you don't want that. If, you know, any extra eraser shavings fell on the floor and you still haven't cleaned them up, do that and now you're done. Sit back and enjoy the view. Alright guys, so that has been my how to paint a mural tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. I will respond to pretty much everybody. That's one of my main goals on my channel. I'm sure some other people are willing to help you too. So yeah, hope you had a fun time and good luck with your mural. If this video helped you out, make sure to share it with a friend or like it and subscribe. Alright guys, I will see you in the next video.